Hey guys, welcome to Bay Area Art School. I'm Mr. B, and today we're going to be taking a look at creating animal selfies. Animal selfies was something we created during the winter art camp for crazy animals. We had a good time making these guys looking like they were taking crazy pictures in miscellaneous places and doing random things. It turned out to be a pretty big hit, and so today I thought I'd do a demo um, using my multimedia sketchbook, pencil and paper, uh, pen and ink, watercolors, and colored pencil. Now if you don't have all of those materials, that's okay. Follow along as best you can, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So thanks for watching, and let's get started. So this is a, a little bit more of a close-up look of the animals that we created during the animal selfie day. It was day four of our uh, crazy animal art camp, winter camp. Um, these are kind of an experiment. I didn't know what to think about it, but it turned out really fun. And um, so now I'm going to create a new one, a uh, new sheet. Let me find a blank piece of paper back here. And there we go. We'll get started. The first one that I thought what I would draw would be, um, I'm going to do three. And this is going to be the first one right here. And I'm going to freeform long straight line. I'm using a 2H pencil. I suppose you guys should probably, would probably want to see this. So let's try an H. Okay, so this is going to be my first one. It's going to be a little bit larger, um, and things move around. So I want to kind of create my composition first. It's going to be one, and I want it to look like they kind of just were, you know, in a, lying on a table. Maybe they they were being shown to, um, you know, someone was looking at them while they were half sipping their tea. I like that there's a watermark on them, um, but kind of a snapshot of just these snapshots. If that makes any sense and I do want them to be similar size so that's that's probably about right size here and right now I'm just reforming them so I think some can come out about here and then the last one will be down here and I don't want it to be perfectly parallel with the paper I want it to feel like it is sort of just loosey-goosey on here hanging out like a scrapbook maybe I don't actually scrapbook so I don't maybe this is kind of like what scrapbooking is on for an artist I have no idea um, all right let's get those widths cool so this is gonna be my my boxes first one I wanted to create up here And I'm going to keep this kind of loose until I'm ready to tighten it up, and then I'll ink it in. Um, the first one I wanted to create is going to be of a cat. And I kind of like the idea of the cat being upset because his owners are, like, doing something weird in the background. First, I want to get a picture of the cat, and I'm going to have him take up the first half of this drawing. You can always tilt your drawing if you want to have it be, uh, you know, make more sense. Put my water color tray there, brace it. Um, sometimes it helps just because it's already at an angle. Might as well help yourself out. So I'm going to draw just the outline of cat. I want him in this general spot here. So I'm going to block in a, a cat head. And this is a general envelope for the cat head. Um, the envelope is going to really help you to see the, the general shape of what you're drawing. Um, and with cats, especially any animal actually, symmetry is a great thing. So I have references that I usually include when I'm working in the camps. But for now I'm just using different references on um, Google. Okay, so that's going to be the eyes. It's going to be the center of the head. Things can move around a lot, too. Um, I think I want the nose to be here. I'm going to give him a tiny little nose. And then it always comes down so that where the, the cheeks kind of meet to the upper lip. And then I'm going to kind of curve. They're basically straight, but they're kind of curved, so it looks like he's 
Oh, Grumpy. I'm not drawing Grumpy Cat, but I want him to be Grumpy. You could totally draw a Grump Grumpy Cat if you wanted to. It'd be pretty funny, actually. And then the eyes. And I'm going to draw them both at the same time. So, then this is actually going to be... This is where the eyes are. Where... My mom used to call it sleep, but I just call them eye boogers. This is eye booger central. And then the eyes are going to come out this far. And measure that. That's about that far on my pencil. Um, um, and everything is really, you know, in the beginning, I think a lot of straight lines is important, right? So there's the cat. Top of his head is going to be here. And then I'm going to have the ears sort of, they're not going to be too upright. I want them to be flatter to the head. So maybe I need to create that line over here so I have a little bit more symmetry. Symmetry is important when drawing certain animals and people. Um, so that, that ear will connect about here, and this ear will connect about here. Okay, so that's kind of blocking in. The ears come about halfway between my initial block in. And, all right, so there's my cat head. And I'm going to start er erasing some of my helper lines. This is just a, um, you know, eraser stick. I think uh, Tombow, Mono Tombow, they make a pretty, pretty good product. Um, but you can find these pretty cheap online and in the art stores. They're good to invest in and get some extra... Little art sticks. Oh, this one's always empty. Almost empty. I'll have to reload that. It's good to check because sometimes when you're erasing hard, it'll, um... I'm going to do that real quick. Yeah, it's a good thing to, to, to... I just refilled it. It's a good thing to replace these, um... You just put it in. Press. Recharge. Reload. It's a good thing to have them, re uh... Not at the very end, because sometimes you can damage your pacer if you're erasing vigorously and hit your paper edge. Alright. Each pencil. So, parents, if you're watching this, wondering if you're going to should send your kids my way, a lot of what I emphasize are the basics. I really um, enjoy working with children. Um, I find that they're really eager to learn. Um, there's a lot of really serious artists out there. Uh, sorry, uh, a lot of serious art kids who take their art seriously, and they want some really in detailed instruction, and I know I did when I was a kid, and so that's kind of what motivated me to want to provide really good um, high school, and I've, I've even heard people say, like, college-level exercises for, for students, um, which is cool, because why wait that long to get good instruction? All right, so I'm going to start putting in the chin here, make this guy kind of hairy. Um, they usually have like a row of little, you could make like really light lines here if you wanted to. In fact, maybe I'll do that. These are where my whisker rows are going to be. And I mean, I can pencil them in here. Kind of want them evenly spaced out, maybe a little bit tighter on the edge as it curves around, the spacing doesn't appear to be the same, they get closer. Okay, so now we got to get the pupils in, and they should be about the same size. That guy looks kind of upset to me. Alright, so let's get the eyes in, and start cleaning up more of my lines. Can stylize it a bit. This is where you can have fun with it and sort of stylize it and no longer look at your photograph. And I'm just gonna have his the neck come straight down. And and that works. That looks good. Um, maybe I'll have a bit of a furrow brow. Yeah, it totally looks like an angry cat. Maybe I'll have this the lip here a little bit. It's a little darker. Great. Um, you could add a highlight in the eye if you wanted to. And I'm lightly shading it. All this is done lightly. I don't want to press really hard. If I press hard, 
then I damage the paper. Once you damage the paper, you can literally get stuck in a groove. And um, then it's really hard to fix. So you, everything needs to be done lightly. That's why I have so many pencils. I like to draw my drawings really light. This is an H, which is a hard lead. Uh, I like to draw on 2H, which is even harder, but you can't see it on camera. Um, all right, so there it is. And now I'm going to have to figure out what I want to put behind. Um, what would be something that annoys a cat? So what could they be doing in the background? People be doing in the background? I don't know. Um, eating? Maybe playing an instrument? Um, I think anyone learning to play the instrument can be kind of... Uh, can be difficult. How about that? How about we have some guy playing a horn? So the horn will go here. And let's make a pivot line for the horn. So sometimes I like to draw center line through my oval and then a perpendicular line coming out. Cool. And we'll have the dude or dudette's face here. I guess dude is kind of gender neutral nowadays. So Back in my day, kids, I had to, I had to, dude just meant, actually, I think dude nowadays can be like a street sign that you just, that, like a light that turns red right when you get to it, it can be your cat, it can be your dog, it can be this dude, it can be this dude, it can be this dude, you can be walking in and seeing this dude. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to draw this dude, there's the, uh, there's the horn piece. And comes out, um, it flutes out like a triangle. And then we'll have, uh, make it look like a horn. And then we'll have, I'm going to draw a hand first. Um, and I'm going to draw a rectangle like that for the hand. Um, anyway, so I'm going to draw just kind of like a claw. Because it's in the background, it is not real. The focus isn't really his hand in the horn. It's this guy playing his horn, right? And so his arm, his wrist will be here, and I'll plan it out. And his his forearm will come to here, and then his arm will come up to his shoulder here. And so that's you need to give him a neck, though, right? So then, so that's the shoulder to the neck. Okay, and then, then we'll have the other shoulder down to his, this is the other arm now, and we'll have it come down, maybe the shoulder will be behind the ear, I'm still drawing it anyways, and I want this guy to maybe be, we'll do another box here, I like to draw where the hand goes and try to play that game of how to make it look like it fits. Okay, so that's. I think that's good. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, start adding some meat to this um, stick figure. And there's the forearm. This is the forearm into the elbow that's behind the cat. I can erase it now. And then it comes up to the forearm. And then this is the torso, right? And maybe I'll make his neck a little bit better. So maybe it's a V-neck or maybe it's a collared shirt. But keep it simple, guys. If if you're just learning to draw, you don't have to overcomplicate it. If you see it in your mind, you can just draw it for sure. Um, and there's always going to be an image online uh, that you can get a reference to. Um, so maybe that I'll have I'll have the shirt come to here. So it goes around. It comes down. And I'm layering this in my mind as I build it. Okay, so there's this arm. And then this will just be like a slew of kind of fingers. It doesn't really need to make a whole lot of sense. Because it's clear what's going on so far. And I don't even need to add a lot more information. So you can give this dude all kinds of crazy hair. Um, if you want. If you have time. Alright, so there's the other sleeve. will come to here. It's kind of an oval. Um, it's going to be... Fabric bends, kind of cartoony, but it's simplified. Simplified is fine, as long as it tells the story, right? All right, and then I'm going to give the cat a little bit more of a hairdo up front here. So 
I've jumped into the foreground, the ear. This is the hair coming out of the ear. Um, it's actually going to come here. He looks a little angrier than I want him to be. He doesn't need to be so angry, right? Just kind of annoyed, which is like, I mean, just listening to this music. Maybe it's not the first time that he's heard his person playing the tr this uh, trumpet. Maybe this comes down more. Maybe I'll straighten the lines out so it's absolutely straight. Because if I curve them up, it'll look like a smile, which you could do. Like, yay, he's playing my favorite song. Right? And then I'm going to have part of the paw here. I don't know why, but it's part of the paw. Maybe he's like holding up, like this hand would be holding the camera, and this one's like kind of bracing it. It's covering the lens. And there's a claw. And part of the other, you know, pad. Foot pad. Alright, let's give this dude an expression. He's really wailing on it, so I'm going to do it kind of cartoony. I create a line. And then from where the mouth is here, in this oval, I'm going to draw a very light line going up through the middle of the eyes and to the top of the head. Now I can kind of, like... Make my eyebrows, make my eyes. They're closed. I'm pressing a little harder, but still not damaging the paper. The cartoon nose would just be like that. And um, it doesn't need to be perfect because I'm not going to really color or finalize any of this till I get all of my drawings done. So the ear will go back here. And let's give him, let's give him like a pretty gnarly haircut. Kind of looks like me when I let my hair grow out. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, and then the cheeks will come out, right? You ever seen those pictures of Louis Armstrong playing the, playing the trumpet? You're going to see those cheeks come out. All right, looks good. So maybe this is my cat, and he's annoyed with me because I'm playing the horn. I don't play the horn. Um, I kind of struggle through the piano. In fact, when I play the piano, it sounds like a cat is on the piano. Okay, so then the fluted edge of the horn is there. I'll clean it up. Get rid of my helper lines. You never know what a helper line is until after you erase it. Um, that's fine. That's why we got erasers. And then I'm going to draw some some things here that look like um, reflections. They can be made up, but they're, you know, sharp and high contrast. So that's where I'm going to have, like, white and dark. So let me bring that up close. You guys take a look at it. All right, so there's my first animal selfie. This, this cat, this dude is totally not cool with this dude learning how to play this thing. Dude. <laughs> Alright, so on to the next, on to the next thing. And I'm going to do a golden retriever. I'm going to have him take up, let's see, this, this one is almost my whole pencil, so that's, I'll have, I'll have this line come up to here. Whoops. And I'll have this line come over to here. So, maybe I need something here to brace. Alright, I'll put my mouse here. Nice. Actually, I don't know if that's any better. Actually, the mouse works pretty well. Make sure it's off. Okay. That works. So, let me move my watercolor kit. I'm going to see the watercolor kit real quick. Well, I'll be using this later on, but this thing is a travel kit that I got. 
Um, if there's a if you have like a group of you that love watercolors, I suggest that you all invest in buying these really good watercolors from um, the tubes. They're not cheap, but if you divide the cost between six or seven of you, then you can all fill up your trays and you get a really cool custom kit. Um, if you don't know if you like watercolors, just get the you know the pre-made, pre-mixed pan kits that they sell. Um, just to see if you like it. Um, I like them pretty well. They're a great way to lay down some nice color and have things still feel like um, light and illustrative. All right. Let's get the doggy in this window. All right. All right. So there's the top of the head. It's going to come down over the ear. Um, this will come down to the neck. The neck. At the other top of the head here. So that's going to be the other side to here. And there. There's basically symmetry. And the face. The eyes are going to be parallel to this top line. Parallel lines are important when drawing the eyes and the nose and the and the even the, like the middle part of the mouth. Even if there's like a smirk, there should, some lines in there should be parallel. I don't know. Should is a dangerous word, right? Anyways, but definitely for the eyes and the nose. Um, if that's the middle of the eyes, the nose middle is going to be over here because he's kind of rotating a little bit, right? So if he's looking at you and he turns a little bit, if that's if that's the nose here. It turns a little bit it's off center, so it's going to turn a little bit, and then the nose is going to be here. And what's funnier than like fisheye pictures of animals? Your pet. So let's do another sort of pentagonal shape here. I'm going to erase this line in here. Sometimes I don't know what I'm drawing until it's down. It happens, especially when I'm drawing from imagination. I want to use long lines and avoid detail. I know that there's going to be an eyeball here and an eyeball here. And now this is the nose, and it's huge. Right, and then there's that center part from the middle of the nose. So the nose will come down here. It's the center of it. Parallel, 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 parallel. And then parallel here. And... That's where the lip splits, and it comes over, and it comes up. We're going to have this retriever smiling. I mean, aren't golden retrievers always smiling? Not a golden. They're great. I mean, she was, she lived to be 17 years old. Can you believe that? Sweet dog. All right, and then the tongue will do this. Because even if they're acting human, they're still going to be panting, I'm guessing. Kind of looks like Doug so far. Not my intention, but if I'm drawing a golden, that's not too bad. Okay, so then there's like a wrinkle here for the cheek. It's the side of the head, and I'm actually going to have the ear come over. So from the top of the eye line here, I'm going to draw a triangle like that. It's going to be smaller than you think because, again, if you're looking at things in fisheye, this thumb is, you know, this thumb is now as thick as my wrist is from your viewpoint. But it's called foreshortening, so things go into the, into the back. Got a paint club coming up soon. Okay, so let's. There's the nose. It's gonna be like the black of the mouth and the chin. And I'm drawing over where it's actually gonna be. Meaning, like, I'm gonna have to crop and erase to fit it into my, like, Polaroid. Okay, so the mouth comes up. Alright, so then if that's the nose, then the eyes are going to be really small. So let's start drawing these eyes in parallel to this line here. So that's one line here. And that's one line here. 
This is actually going to connect to the tip of the nose. This line here and this line here are the same in symmetry. And then I'm going to draw a little triangle and a diamond. So diamond, eye boogers, diamond, eye boogers, diamond. What do you think? It doesn't feel right to me. Maybe more space. So I'm going to erase this eye. I'm going to erase my center line too. And then I'm going to move this eye even further over. So that is that. Then from here to here, I can draw a line through it so that the parts of the eyes connect. When you're learning to draw, always look for long connecting lines so that things are easy to line up. It's easier to see it in your mind. And then later you can erase it and everyone think you did magic. But really you're just learning to see a bigger picture. That's what your parents mean by see the big picture. Or maybe you're telling your parents to see the big picture. See the big picture. It's important that we go on this trip so that you can get time to decompress. <laughs> All right. So here's the other side of the head. Um, and ear connects up here and then the ears always kind of flop out right so we'll do that and it comes out there's my retriever that looks good um i didn't leave a lot of room for what's going on in the background i'll have to figure that out but let's get the nose finished up a little bit there is a center line for the nose it's going to be shadow shape shadow shape is basically where I know a consistent dark value is going to be. Um, get the op pupils in. Let's get the upper lid. Like when you blink, this comes down and it goes up into and under this fold. We all have it. All mammals have it. And then this is nostril. And I just want to put, I mean, the whole nose is going to be dark. But there's the nostril. All right. And our doggy's looking pretty good. All right. We add a collar here. Okay, cool. I like it. I like this dude. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um. Okay, so there's my second one. As I look at this, I want to bring his head over here, a little bit more curved. And then they have this ridge on the top of their head, um, retrievers do. Um, it's kind of the skull, the way the skull works. And I'm going to add some hair here. Um, let's get some hair up here too, a little bit short. I like to put hair in, in like bursts of three little strokes like three parallel lines here and there. Okay, the nose is here. It's going to be a dark shape because they have dark mouths. So that'll come down here. And I was thinking what might make this kind of fun is to put glasses on him because they don't, you know, animals don't wear glasses normally. So let's see what it looks like. I can always erase it. So let's put in... Uh, the center is going to be right here, but it's not going to rest because... Let's put, this is where it would rest on a human nose, but because the dog nose is wider, let's make big glasses, and it'll be up higher, and it's kind of like a butterfly shape, and even though I'm going outside of my drawing area here, I want to make sure the lines kind of mirror each other and are parallel, if, um, not parallel, but mirroring each other complement each other, I guess, is the, the word I'm looking for. All right, so that works. Um, you can do another little inside frame. And even when it's a curved object, because sunglasses curve around the edges, I would really encourage you to try to keep, you know, straight lines. Because it's easy to line things up with straight lines. All right, there's our retriever. 
And for the background, I still haven't figured it out. It may just be a picture of him with his glasses, or her with her glasses. And that's about it. Um, I'm going to put indications of an eyebrow up there. I'll erase some of my helper lines and we'll move on to the next drawing. I can always add more detail in later um, so I can figure out the background if I want to add more. I know I said um, I had an idea in the beginning, but all right. So let me move my little mouse there. And the third one will be. Alright, so I think we have a cat, a dog, how about something more random, a bird, would work. I think I like the idea of um, maybe a giraffe. So let's, let's have a giraffe right here, and um, again, it's kind of fisheye lens effect so it's gonna look really distorted which hopefully will come out kind of cool and funny all right so let's have let's have the neck coming up from here and it'll meet the chin and um and then it'll come out I'm going to draw my block in for it. Um, nose, the head, and so then it'll be something like that. That's pretty exaggerated, I think, but um, that feels decent. I just looked up giraffe selfie and found this kind of fun image. So I'm just kind of going to do the same thing I did before, figure out where the center of the face is. And the face is not facing right at you, it's kind of at an angle. So if that's the center and it kind of comes out at an angle, like again, is it facing you, comes out at an angle, that means that if that's the center, it's going to come out to here and to there. And that'll help me, because I want the nose up, up here. And I'll put a little bit of a box. And the nostrils will be here. Almost looks like a little hat. Now the, the snout comes out. This actually drops in into the snout. The snout comes over. And it'll come to this line here. But I feel like it needs to actually overhang a bit. So it'll come out to there. And then I'll have the chin, uh, the, the lip and the chin, and the lip is going to have an overhang, there's muscles in the lips, and that's cool, that looks good, up to the jawline, comes out, and then the eye is going to be right here at the point, so I'm going to do the eyes at the same time, so I'm going to put two little lines here. I'm going to make little triangles under that line. And I'm going to have the eyeballs come out a little bit more on both sides of the curve. They're round. And there needs to be a top to it. And then it'll go all the way over. There's a bump on the ridge of the head, it looks like. And then it comes down to the eye, other side. Almost looks like E.T. Um, if you don't know who E.T. is, then it's a movie about an extraterrestrial who looks like this. Alright, um, in the ear, I'm going to have one ear here. Again, I'm going to draw a diamond shape, and something like that, and I'll draw another one here, one, two, three, four, 
and then the ears kind of they the only reason I'm thinking they do this is just so that through evolution you don't have like rain going into their ear but also we need a cone shape so because if it's up in the air it actually would catch the rain so anyways the ears curve in kind of like petals on a leaf regardless of my bad guesses and then they have these little horns so I'm going to add these little horns here. One, two, and then maybe there's a bit of a, kind of look like tiny chef hats, don't they? Okay, and I'm drawing them with straight lines. There's my giraffe. The neck here can come out just a little bit, and I'll bend it. Maybe two straight lines. And then here I'm going to have the pattern. So I'm going to draw in kind of a pattern. Keeping in mind, the pattern needs to kind of, all those, these lines here need to curve around the neck. And it doesn't need to be perfectly what you see. Um, mostly it just needs to feel like these patterns are of similar size and shape. That's going to make it feel and look like a pattern. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to put in a couple of highlights. I forgot to put highlights on our dog, too. Great. And let's erase some of the helping lines. And I'm brushing off the excess, but tr not pressing too hard. I don't want to smear my drawing. Pencil does smear. <laughs> and uh, I don't like smearing pencil too much if I don't mean to. All right, here we go. So let's continue on. I think... As far as backgrounds, I'm going to go back to this guy here, and I'm going to put in, like, some hot air balloons. Um, so here's our dog. And I'm going to put in some tiny little hot air balloons. And that's, that's where the burner is. And that's the basket. Maybe there's an actual... Another balloon here, I'm going to draw a circle, two lines that come down to like a, like a cone shape. It stops and then starts again with a little, it's like an exclamation point. Um, my eraser. And maybe another one right here. And you can draw a whole bunch, really tiny if you want. Uh, I'm going to paint and ink these, so I don't want to be too... Right, and so then, I don't want them to be too small. That's pretty small. Maybe I should make that one a little bit larger. I can mark how big I want it, top and bottom. So the bottom will be pretty small, about that size. And then, another exclamation point. Let's do a circle. Two lines. Okay, that looks good. And then we can have some indication of a horizon line here. And then maybe some clouds. And this is how I kind of like to draw clouds quickly. A big line and a small, sorry, a big curve and a small curve and a big curve and a small curve and a big curve and a small curve. It's kind of nice beginner clouds and it can come out here. All right, that looks, that looks decent. Uh, that's my horizon line. Maybe that's a hill. You can add more information and detail in there if you want. All right, for my giraffe, I think I'm going to have it be like... Um, you'll have him maybe... With the Golden Gate Bridge behind him, kind of at an angle, like he's taking a picture, and then 
that's the water line. Things are going to curve, so it's not a straight horizon. And then the bridge kind of does this over it. And then we have the spires. The towers, right? And then I don't really see the top of it in my picture, so I could lower it. And... Um, and then it'll come down into the water. I think the towers come down into the water here somewhere. And over here is the Marin uh, headlands. Maybe we'll put a sailboat right here. And none of this needs to make sense because when you're doing a fish eye, everything kind of warps around. So um, I'll have a sailboat right there. Maybe it's smaller. It just needs to make sense to itself. But if you know if you're beginning to draw and you're learning how to draw, don't worry about nitpicking too much. It's important that you that you draw. The more you draw, the better you get. And that even even if you go quickly too, it's just good that it happens. So, okay, so maybe some of the water here, slight reflection. And that's it. So that is my animal selfie. It's good. So let's let's um, ink it. So now I'm gonna get. Um, I forgot to mention that in the beginning. We need a, a pen. So you need to get a waterproof pen. Um, if you're not sure if your pen is waterproof, because we're gonna be putting uh, watercolor over this, you need to like test it on the side and then take a little bit of water in your brush. Have, wait a minute for the ink to dry. And then test that ink and see if it runs. If it runs, then it's not waterproof. Um, on the side of it, if it says like India ink or waterproof or water resistant, that's a pretty good indicator that you can use that pen. This is the pen that I use. This is a Micron. I use a three for something this big. Um, they go smaller into a zero one, and then even smaller into a zero zero five. Um, it's all part of a millimeter, I'm guessing. So you need to be careful with the little tiny ones because they'll bend. But these are good. Um, archival ink just means that it's not going to um, fade or bleed over time. It doesn't mean that it's waterproof. This one says it says waterproof. If you can't find a waterproof pen, then you'll just skip the watercolor step and just. Uh, use um, you could use acrylic, but we'll just use colored pencil or crayon even. All right, so I'm going to outline my Polaroids first. So I think I'm going to have this one on top, and I'm going to freehand it. But if you want to uh, get a ruler and make them consistent, you can. I'm not going to be so uh, I'm not going to do that, but I, if you want to, you totally should for your straight lines. So I'm going to do my outline to here, and then comes over to the edge. You need to hold it so it doesn't slide around on me. This comes down to about here, and then this side is going to come, how far, how wide do I want these? I might as well make these the same widths. That's going to work. That's going to work too. Okay, great. Go that to the far line. There, there. And then it'll just do parallel lines. Doing long lines, sometimes it's better to just look where you want to go. Because if you follow your line as you draw it, if I'm looking here, it can squiggle. But if I keep my eye here, as soon as I start moving it and move pretty quickly, it'll create a straight line. And let's do my final line here. And you'll see that I'm cutting off part of my drawing. Okay, so there's my out, outer one for my giraffe. And I'm going to leave just a little bit of room at the bottom and then make a pretty narrow edge for the white edge of the Polaroid. So this is going to come down about there. It's going to come over across the top. Nice parallel lines. Hold your paper. Um, it makes it easier so it doesn't slide. Your pencil is going to smear a little bit too, so try not to drag your 
hand too much across your artwork. Alright, and then my last line across the bottom. There we go. So that's that one. Um, I'm going to have this one underneath. This is going to be the middle one. So let's do this one next. I'm going to have a line coming from here to there and stop. And then another parallel line. I can measure it. I measure it with my pencil, but you can use a ruler. Alright, so that works about there. And then a nice parallel line from here to here. Is it going to be perfect? No, you could totally line it up and take your time to be perfect. But in the beginning, when we're learning to draw, it's just important that we get it done. Um, and with with time comes accuracy and consistency. So you got to, you know, don't be too tough on yourselves and just sort of get through the exercises as well as possible. Don't you wish math was like that? Just get through it. Don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be accurate. <laughs> I actually really like math. And for those of you who like math, this measuring way may really sort of um, help you understand how to draw better. Okay, so let's do another border similar to what I did with the giraffe. Parallel lines. Alright, looks good. Yeah, so that falls behind it. And now we'll do our dog at the Hot Air Balloon Festival. And I don't know if these are even the same height. It doesn't really matter. I'm just now checking it. This one's shorter. So I just want to be in the same range. But that's nice because now I can make this come up a bit higher. So I'm going to keep it parallel to there. And that means that I can have more room for my hot air balloons. And then this is my edge, so it'll come down at a right angle to there. And then this is my bottom to there. And then I'll do my last line, looking at where I want to end up, parallel. Far from perfect, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and drag a line across. there cutting off some of his face but I guess that's what makes it kind of funny Polaroids are great for taking candids candids are a type of photography that like when you sit there and you're posed and you're in a nice shirt maybe what you do for Christmas or the holidays um, for formal portraits those are not candids candids is when your brother your sister your mom or dad are taking a big bite of spaghetti and you take a picture hoping to find that they spill, or it's just everyone laughing. Candids are selfies. So selfies kind of, I just wanted to pick up that moment so it's not super organized. It's kind of chaotic, a little chaotic. Disorganized. All right, so let's start inking in the rest of it. Before I do that, I'm going to erase away some of the outside of my drawing because I don't want to ink up into a an area that is now no longer part of my photograph, my, uh, my framed area. And this is why I like to use really light, light pencil pressure. Um, the 2H, I've pressed this hard enough so you guys can see it in the video, but it's harder than normal and it does stain the paper. So luckily some of the staining will go away. And if it doesn't, you can always use white paint, white acrylic paint. Um, if you've never used acrylic paint before, I like acrylics because they're fast drying. Um, Mom and Dad, they are permanent. So make sure you wear and uh, clothing that you don't care about too much. And maybe you put a drop cloth if you're inside or you go to an area in the house where you don't mind. It's easy to clean up. Alright, so that's a, that's a note of responsibility. Um... But we won't be, I'm not using acrylics for this. We'll do that in another video. Alright, so there's my outlines. I've erased everything that I want to, and I'm just going to go from top to bottom.
All right, so I'm gonna start watercoloring, and the first thing I'm gonna do is use these binder clips. These are two inch binder clips. Um, these things are awesome because uh, if you use a sketchbook, which I really think if you take your art pretty seriously, you should totally get one. Um, mostly, if you put it in your backpack or your bag, you're carrying it, a lot of your drawings and things are gonna smear or get ruined. So what I do is I take these clips and I clip them so that just a little bit's hanging over. Not enough to like tear anything else, but mostly to protect the corners. Um, and this like preserves my 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 drawings and everything uh, infinitely longer than if I didn't have it. And then I just travel like that. Um, so that's a trick I wish someone had told me a long time ago. It's a pretty simple one, but I feel like some of the best tricks are usually the most simple tricks. Now. For this painting, this watercolor, I'm going to, let's get this, there it is. Watercolor, even on multimedia paper, which this is, which is a heavier weight paper, um, it, watercolor is going to warp paper. So what I like to do is I kind of get this thing taut against the spirals, and then kind of run my finger over get the whole book, and then get the clip on, and then lay it flat. Um, you can actually remove these too if you're so inclined that they're in the way of your painting after you clip them down. All right, so let me get the bottom one before I throw it on the floor. And clip. It doesn't matter that it, you know, mostly here when I'm watercoloring, um, I want it to be tight doesn't have to be off the edge. just needs to be out of the way. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. I have um, some watercolors here. This is a, like a little kit that I built. I have a whole bunch of watercolors here. Um, these are individual tubes, and they range in price, and they're not cheap, but I use these enough that I know which colors I like, and these are the brushes that I'll use too. So I use sables. Um, synthetic. Um, this is a really nice one. It keeps a pretty good um, uh, point on it and it's wide enough that I can drop a lot of water in too and cover a certain area. So this is a really nice multi-purpose or all-purpose brush. And then I have some smaller ones here too. These are pretty cheap ones that just do the job. And I'm not going to show you too much about the color mixing. I'm just going to leave this to you. And so we're kind of, this is like paint club. Basically you show up and you just work on your own stuff and together we'll just, you can ask questions, uh, not on the video obviously, you could write them in the comments. And um, what I will use though is, this is my color key so I know what colors are where, otherwise um, my memory isn't so great. Sometimes I go a month without watercoloring or longer and I forget which is which. So this tells me which value to use. So I will put this, um, I'll put this over here for now. And let's get painting. I think one of the most important things about color is knowing just when to use value and when to, and when to, um, and how to use it. Um, so that, you know, a lot of that is something you may have already learned in your schools, third, fourth grade, fifth grade even, um, talking about color, color theory, and creating your you know, knowing your rainbows and the values of, of, of each one. So a lot of that will be, may, may talk about here too. So I'm going to jump in. And um, with watercolors, we want to do everything really lightly. And part of doing something lightly on this is, for me, I have to, because I have my table, like this is not level. Things will run down. So I'm going to be doing light layers. If I was doing heavier layers, I'd want my tail, table to be more level, which I could rotate, but I'm not, I'm not going to. Alright, so I think I want him to be kind of a, a gray. And I'm going to have the background here be sort of like uh, bluish. Uh, brown hair, gold, gold horn. Um, red shirt maybe, kind of stand out. So let's start with my background, which I said was going to be a light blue. So I'm just going to use kind of a light blue. And 
we go. And mistakes can be quickly removed using a paper towel or I just used my finger and smeared it out of an area. Mistakes happen. If you make a big mistake with watercolor, you can um, see I forgot to do that line. That's actually pencil. I forgot to do that line in ink, so I'm gonna just leave it. Um, uninked and just put the, the value change the shift of color change sorry but use it because the cat's gonna be gray All right don't forget this area here and anywhere else I might see it maybe up here that works and um, this is just the first layer of like a sky blue this is actually a uh, which one is this this is cerulean blue which is a really nice blue for skies. I like mixing ceruleans and um, ultramarines for nice, nice, rich blue skies. Um, a lot of these naming conventions are going to be the same throughout, but they're not always that way. Okay, so let's see. Let's do the next forward layer. How about we do yellow? We use... Um, Cad medium yellow. For my um, horn. And just get a nice rich pigment. So I'm really going to mix it in there. Load my brush up with the pigment with not too much water. And put it right over it. I'm going to try and stay out of my highlight areas. And let's get the rest of this brass, even though it's brass. Just, there we go, yellow. All right, so this dude, I'm going to have him be me. I'm kind of, here I look kind of pinkish, but I'm kind of brownish pinkish. So let's put in um, a yellow ochre, because uh, yellow ochre is actually a really good color for all ethnicities and all skin tones. Um, it's really just a good basis for all of it. It's kind of a, kind of a muddy, orangey warm mud tone <laughs> and um so i'll put that down as the first layer and i'm going to put it down with um lightly so i'm going to mix some more water in that and i'll just put a first layer it looks a little yellow it ran into the um the gold of the brass the yellow of the brass so i need to be careful and over the hands. But you should make the skin tone whichever color you want. You can go
And then we'll add another layer once that dries for the shadows, and I'm going to bring in a little bit more red, um, which I'll use a burnt sienna, I think. And I'll figure that out then. But I am going to, as that dries, I'm going to do the foreground of the cat. So we're going to do the darks last. Um, but I am going to do this gray, and the gray I'm going to use is this Payne's gray. Payne's gray is a really good value to have uh, for watercoloring. It's going to bring a nice, cool gray. Uh, if you mix a lot in there, it gets really, really dark. If you add some water to it, and then I dab it on the paint, on my paper towel, mix a nice gray, and that's going to be a nice sort of like gray for this cat. And he's going to pop because I'm going to have everything in the background be lighter. And now I just want to make sure I get the outline. And make sure I do not get the eyes because I'm going to have the eyes be yellow and green. Um, I'm going over the nose even though I might have the nose be slightly different value. My brush is not dry it's a little wet um, to get a little wet use a paper towel and you pull out some of the excess moisture and let's get that fur and then down the side here trying to keep my polaroid white and then you want to get his paw too which can be darker because if it's pressed up against the lens it's probably not a light a lot of light coming through there we know that'd be really dark. And the ear, um, I'll do a nice light gray over it too. And I'll let that dry. And let's get in the dude's hair. The dude's hair is going to be brown. I'm going to have it be raw sienna. Actually, I'm going to go burnt sienna, which is kind of a, a reddish. And he's got almost reddish hair and my brush is getting a little sloppy here so I can get my paper towel or I just smear it out of the way and I wipe my finger on the paper towel I don't like smearing with pencil but I do like smearing with other mediums like watercolor and acrylic um, all right so there's the red hair it's no longer really looking like me but that's fine so let's get in a red shirt I'm going to get a real bright red for the shirt. Looks good. And when I say it looks good, I mean talking about that I've laid down the color. I often don't like my artwork. I realize that it may look pretty good to you beginners, but um, the truth is that as an artist, I don't think any of us really like our work, especially in the middle. And if we're lucky, we accept it when it's done. So um, I often know that when I'm really disliking my work the most, I'm in the middle of my project and I have to work through it. So I'm used to that now. But I do, you know, this is just for fun more than anything else. So let's get the green. I'm going to get some really bright green. This is a permanent green light. And there, nice green. And clean my brush up. Dip it in the water, dab and pat it against my paper towel, and uh, let's get maybe that a light yellow. I get the rest of the eye in. Now there's all kinds of parts of the eyes and I could spend a lot of time on this, but for the sake of this, I'm just going to lightly put it in. Just like that. I want to put a little bit of darker red. Actually, I want to get a purple. So I have a, a violet. 
I'm going to avoid using black when possible. I'm going to use violet on the paw. Makes it a little bit more interesting. And it looks dark, so... Just that it's being dark, my brain will recognize. Okay, so that's good. It'll recognize that um, it's a darker value. It looks like a nose. Noses are dark. The pads are darker. Looks good. All right. I think I'm maybe a little bit in the sleeves. And I'm going to move on to my next one. It's good for a first layer. All right. So my, my golden retriever is a gold color, which is actually going to be kind of a brown. So I'm going to use the yellow ochre all the way around it, everywhere. And then the eyes will be brownish, and then the nose will be darkish. And then I'm going to put maybe bright green glasses on here, and then I'll put colors all the way around the background. So in this case, I'm going foreground to background. And there's no real rhyme or reason in the beginning. Normally, when in doubt, I always do the background first. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to do just our golden retriever's face first. Let's get my yellow ochre, nice and rich, lots of water in there, get, cover my brush, and then I'm just going to cover the whole guy, and I'm going to ignore that the glasses are there. And it can be kind of feathered and shoot off the edge. Because that's what fur does. The tongue is here, so I'm going to not do the tongue. And I'm going to just continue on with the rest of his face. And I want to leave the eyes. And again, if you don't have this many colors, you just find the color that makes sense. You want to turn it into a collie, you can use black and white. If you want to, you know, a chihuahua, all brown or whatever, or a black dog, black lab. Totally up to you. Um, black lab might be hard because it's actually more of a chocolate brown. But you can always add all your colors together and make a nice brown. I wouldn't do that in the dish pan, but you could always, you know, mix it into a separate pan or a separate tray if you have a watercolor tray. Once paints get, once watercolors get kind of muddy in their um, original pan, it can be pretty hard to clean out. You can also just flood it with water and then absorb all the mud with a paper towel too. So it's not the end of the world. Alright, so there's my golden. Now I'm going to get a darker value. I'm going to use uh, the burnt umber, which is a very kind of warm, dark brown. And I'm going to do a little detail work around the eyeball, around the eyes, the eyelid. Oops, it's not. There we go. Get a nice sharper tip on the end. The eyeballs. And then the nose. And the nose actually gets dark all the way down to the bottom. And some of these areas are still wet, so it's creating a gradient, which is cool. Okay, so a little bit more dark over the nose. And maybe I'll make the nostril a little bit darker because no light really goes in there. And then under the chin and the corner down here. And maybe I'll darken this up too. Just a little bit more. And I can add some accents to it. Maybe I'll emphasize the smile. I don't want to add too much. I don't want to make it look like there's makeup on our, our friend here. I mean... You could, if you wanted to, you can totally add makeup. I mean, they are animals. They are animals that are acting like humans, so humans wear makeup. 
All right, let's get a dark red for the tongue and wash it in. That works. Now I'm going to get, how about a really bright orange for the sunglass frame. I guess they're not sunglasses, they're just glasses. Um, if you're going to... Sunglasses can totally be an expression of your style. And this dude's like, I'm orange, I'm yellow, what am I? I like that, looks good. So I got some orange loaded up, I'm going to make one of my or my balloons back here orange. And I'll add another color, red. Let's get a nice bright blue. Do a dark blue one here. It's not dark blue, is it? Now remember, if I wanted it to be really dark, I would add in um, more layers after it dries. Someone once explained watercolors to me like tinted glass. So you do a tint, and then you do another tint on top of it, and then you do another tint on top of it, and eventually it gets darker. So the light areas you need to be very careful and preserve. Watercolors are very different from other paints because you want to, with most paints and drawings, you want to like declare and make your dark areas first, and then you work into the light. Um, Kind of like a supporting actor makes that light really stand out. Because light is what really captures the eye and captures the focus, usually. Not always, but usually. But with watercolor, you have to preserve it. So you put down a light wash, and then you make it darker. In certain areas, darker and darker and darker. Alright, let's get a green balloon. Alright, while I have that green loaded up, I'm going to make this sail here. Part green. Okay. Put my brush. All right, let's get this sky in. In this sky, I'm going to make um, again blue. It could be any color you wanted, though. Maybe it's a sunset in your drawing. You could have reds and purples that go down to like an orange or peach color. I'm actually going to cover over my little baskets watercolor is basically pigment that's being moved around with water so even if it dries you can still add water and move it around green in my background here. What kind of a green field? He picked up some of the orange here, um, the yellow ochre on him. Or our friend. Alright, that looks pretty good. So let's move down to here and I'm going to add in, um, let's do the giraffe. The giraffe again is going to have very dark kind of brown. So I could use again the yellow ochre or I think I'm going to go with um, a burnt, a burnt umber. Put 
the base of the giraffe is going to be kind of yellow, so I'm just going to make the whole face yellow. Very light yellow. The whole face, including the eye. And the snout. And the neck. And I don't want to get the white edge of the Polaroid. Alright, so that looks kind of cool. So I've got that blocked in. I'm going to use a blue. Use a different blue. Use a phthalo blue. Halo blue is, has a little bit of green in it, and I like Thalo for water. Not always, but often I do, especially with watercolors. It's such a nice, rich blue. More water. So you may have noticed that your paper is starting to buckle. That's why we have these binder clips so it doesn't buckle up on you. It gets a little warped, but it stays flat. It doesn't curve up on you. And then you'll just leave it clipped till it's dry. And you can use a hair dryer to speed drying time. It's pretty wet, so I'm going to have to pull some moisture off and absorb it with a dry brush. And then take my brush and then lay it on my paper towel so it pulls off that moisture. And the edge is getting green. So that happens. Accidents happen. And it's not a big deal. I'll just go to a different area for a minute and let that dry a bit. And it may not fully dry, but it also gets absorbed into the paper. And I think I'm going to make it darker here on the bottom because this side is so dark. I can add little lines too if I wanted. I'm going to simulate or if it's water, make it feel like water. I could put a little bit darker underneath here the shadow. I might go back to that green area too. The bridge would actually have a shadow here. That's a bad shadow. It's actually higher over here, but that's okay. The focus isn't on the bridge. The focus is on the animals, so that's okay. Alright, so I'm going to use my light, light blue again one more time for the sky. And I'm not being very original with my sky color. But you can, you can make it pink, orange, the sky's going, you know, sun's going down again, sunset. I'll 
use a little bit lighter here for the cloud than our dog friend. Maybe in the whites of the eyes, because the whites of the eyes aren't actually white. They're kind of grayish. And they pick up the colors, the ambient light around it. Your cat friend too. The corners here are a little bit darker. Okay, so let's get my dark purple and finish up some of the details. And the giraffe, that's dark eyes. Too dark. Made a mistake. Made a mistake. Okay, let's try again. Dark purple. And then the nose, the nostrils were here, and I can make that smile a little bigger, and that part under the lip a little bit bigger, and that's probably pretty good. So I'm gonna my next color I'm gonna use on the giraffe is gonna be the browns for the spots. I'm gonna use a, a burnt umber again, dark brown. Brown. I don't think it's too early for you guys to start learning the names of colors. Um, as a painter, these colors are a little bit more universal and they don't change in names. As opposed to like if your parents or you guys are going through a remodel or you're painting your room, the paint company's name the paints kind of weirdly and not consistent do that so that they have a new color to sell. It's a unique color. Even if it's not an actual unique color. There are millions of colors you can make with Okay, that looks good. And a little bit more shadows. And I'm going to use the same I'm gonna go over the dog here a little bit more. Darken up this area here. You can smear it too. Nose a little bit darker. Maybe over the eyes there, give it a little bit more of a shadow. And in the cat too, maybe in the under the face, a bit more of a shadow. And I like that. I'm gonna add a little bit more to it. But in the ears, a little warmth in the ears, so he's not so monotone, not so flat. And in the hair, I'm gonna darken the hair one more time. And I'm gonna leave the skin tone that sort of generic light skin tone which is really just a really light yellow ochre. All right, so that is my um, my watercolor layer. I'm gonna let this dry for a minute and get my colored pencils and I'll come back and put a little bit more detail in. All right, so I'm gonna get into the water, uh, the, uh, this is dry now. Um, and I am gonna use um, my Polychromos. These are uh, really pretty nice. I got them like pretty cheap. I think I got like that 50 or 60% off coupon at Blix. I think like once a year near the holidays they have like a 60 or even 70% off one item. And that's when you can get like a really nice, what would normally be like 70 bucks is down to like 30 bucks um, set of pencils. Um, if you're spending your allowance. Otherwise, this is a, if you like colored pencils, this is a great set. Um, the whites I use are actually different. These are, um, I think I'm pronouncing it wrong, but Karan Dinesh. Karan Dash? Karan Dash? I don't know. Anyways, these whites are a little bit more opaque, and they work over whites better. The whites that come with the Faber-Castell don't um, cover, like, other colors very well. Um, so that's the only exception. These two are different. Okay, so let's 
let's go over and put a little bit more detail in. And I'm going to start popping out some of the detail. This is going to look like black, I think, maybe on the camera. But I'm using a really dark indigo. And I'm going to start going over all the eyes. Um, that one's not so bad. I'm going to outline some of the eyes here on the cat. And that green will show through. I'm not pressing too hard. I can darken the nose a little bit. And then I can add a little bit more hairs. Again, I go in threes. And I can shade this area here. So the light looks like it's coming from this direction. And I'll make the top of the eyebrow a little bit more pronounced. Um, and I'll show you my pencil sharpener in a minute here. Colored pencil sharpeners are essential, but they, these are totally different from like the little Ticonderogas you use at school, the yellow pencils. Um, all right, so maybe a little bit more dark here and hair, giving a little bit more shadow. All right, so the dog, let's add darkness into the eye. Leaving the brown around the edge. And into the nostrils. And then maybe here underneath. Um, and let's go into our giraffe. It'll finish up the eyes here too. Covering over the purple, really darkening the eyes. Giraffes have such dark eyes and long eyelashes. So you can really play that up. You can add more eyelashes if you want to. And then the nose here in the crosshatch shade. It takes practice to learn to shade well, so you just jump in and try your best. I think the best thing to do is really try to keep consistent directions of shading and not just do a patch job. Sometimes a patch job is exactly what a drawing needs, but in the beginning it's good to really try to control your lines so you know what you're doing. You want your art to eventually be less of a series of happy accidents, which are totally cool. Um, but ideally you want it to be more a collection of like uh, learned skills and knowing when to use them. All right, so let's get the bridge basis down here into. I'm gonna switch colors. And I'll uh, get a light gray. Put under the eyes here for the light gray. Just darken it a little bit. And the gray will flatten some of the brightness of this yellow out. Because you don't want everything being 100% saturated with a massive amount of color. Otherwise, it kind of can tire your audience out. So let's get the Golden Gate Bridge in, which is actually more of a reddish. So I'm going to use this. Uh, I don't know what this one is. This is a all right. So let's get the red in. I'm gonna make the whole bridge. Oops, knocking the camera around. All the way across. All the way across, and then maybe go over my lines here. And then maybe every other line I inked in. I don't need to do all of them. I'll make it feel like it's our Golden Gate Bridge. Or the Golden Gate Bridge if you're not a native around here. I'm going to give the boat a matching red hull. And then I'll add some colors into. Let's go. Orange.
yellow. And red again in the sail. And the background is going to be kind of a light sap green. I think it's actually more of a brown one, but it just depends on the time of year. Okay, and then I can add you know, some of these colors, add a little bit more depth into the balloons. Let's get a red. Get the red. And just sort of pop out a little bit more definition. This is a multimedia drawing for sure. I can go over that glasses again too if I want. And then the brown face. Try to find a color that's similar to it. And let's and I'm gonna do two directions of shading for this area here. And the ear is gonna get darker as it gets closer to the tip. And then maybe a little bit more detail detail and definition around the eyes. And this is up to you. How much detail do you want to add? Add little people in the balloons. Uh, get the baskets in there. Alright, so I'm going to use a blue. Um, I'm going to add shadows. So, like, if this was on a table, these things have dimension. And I want it to look like you were opening this up, that uh, Polaroids were overlapping each other. And blue works. Blue is a good shadow color. I could always take a little bit more blue out of this if I by adding some of the gray. Or even lightly a little bit of red, because red is the opposite of blue, and it'll pull it towards a neutral color. Alright, so let's get some of that. So a lot of what I've tried to do with the color here um, is to really get a bit of contrast of my subjects so that it's easy for the viewer to see what I'm looking at. Meaning the yellow giraffe and the blue water in the background. Or gray cat and the guy in the background. I can make that cat darker if I want to. Let me get a darker gray. I can shade it in. Make it a little bit darker. And the foot too darker. Plus it makes him look a little bit more furry. You can do fur by shading quickly. If you take your time and you make a nice smooth gradient, um, then you have a nice smooth gradient and you can do all kinds of different materials. But if you go quickly, it kind of looks hairy. And that's great for fur. And so that's it. I'm going to write in my um, final little bit here. I'm going to get my paper clips off. Binder clips, sorry. One. And two. And I will write it in down here. Today is two or four twenty twenty one. These are animal selfies. That's it. Thanks for watching.